afraid of all these changes that are com coming in the f into the future? Well, I think it's human nature to be afraid of change, except that as soon as the changes happen, we're afraid to lose the change. Uh, the kind of technology that this conference represents is a good example I mentioned earlier. There's seven billion cell phones, and they're actually very liberating. We're not limited anymore to the accident of geography. We can create communities based on common interest around the world. Uh, it's led to enormous sharing of information. Just the fact that you can have hundreds of thousands of kids in Africa taking free MIT, Harvard courses, or the best Chilean universities uh, is just one small example. Um, I showed that one graph, I've got 50 other graphs, uh, that dynamic graph that went from 1800 to the present time uh, to show progress in health and wealth. Uh, we can see the same thing in education. Uh, even violence, people say, oh, it's a, you know, it's a very violent world. That's because we hear about all the violence. There's a book uh, by Steven Pinker came out recently, The Better Angels of Our Nature, showing an exponential decline in violence. Your chance of being killed today in interpersonal violence or state-sponsored violence is 500 times less than it was a few centuries ago. Doesn't seem that way because we hear about all the violence. You know, as I mentioned, uh, there could be a battle in the next village. A hundred years ago, you wouldn't know about it. Um, there is a downside to technology. I mean, technology is a double-edged sword. Fire kept us warm, cooked our food, but also burned down our villages, was used as an instrument of war. Uh, these new technologies are also very powerful. I think we can keep them under control. I mean, one example, is a good example of, of that is sulfur viruses. Uh, sulfur viruses are getting more and more sophisticated, more and more numerous, but uh, we have a, a emerging uh, technological immune system of antiviral software that can, it also gets more and more sophisticated and has kept up with the challenge. Uh, you know, nobody has taken down the internet for even one second. Uh, so we have to keep working on these things. Uh, there's also ethical standards for responsible scientists to prevent accidental problems. Uh, the if I were a prescient futurist in 1900, I would look around and say, okay, a third of you work on farms, a third of you work in factories, but I predict that in 100 years, by the year 2000, it'll be 3% and 3%. And everybody would go, oh my God, we're going to be out of work. And I said, well, don't worry, you're going to get you know, work in telecommunications companies, uh, like Intel, uh, designing new websites, designing new chip designs, designing uh, computer systems design for fashion. Nobody would have any idea what I'm talking about. 65% of the jobs today in Chile and the United States and Europe uh, didn't exist 50 years ago, let alone 100 years ago. Most people work actually on creating information of one kind or another, and that's going to continue. We destroy jobs at the bottom of the skill ladder, we create new jobs at the skill ladder, at the top of the skill ladder. But the Luddites emerged in 1800. And the